Hello everyone, this is Joseph Fosco with American News Post. Uh, we're doing today's sports podcast uh, on today, Thursday, August the 1st, 2013. I'm here with our host, Michael Magnifici. Good afternoon, everybody. And our co-host, Frank Coconati. Hi, how's everybody doing? I'm doing fine and hope what everyone else is. And uh, guys, I think what we're starting with football today, isn't that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Good. We had a little uh, problem in the Philadelphia Eagle camp, Riley Cooper, wide receiver, good wide receiver, um, was at a Kenny Chesney concert, and I, from what I understand, that he got a little confrontation with a security guard, Mm -hmm. and the security guard was trying to back him down from something, and he he said, I'm not afraid of any nigger, and when his teammate, this happened in June, actually, and it just came about, now they had him on on the uh, camera phone, Right. and what happened was that uh, the NFL didn't do any you know, they didn't discipline him about it, but the Eagles did. Right. They fined him. They didn't suspend him. And Roger Goodell, uh, he said that he'll just let the Eagles handle it. It could be an in-house thing, but it's a big thing. I mean, that could divide a locker room, Frank. Oh, you know absolutely. Yeah, you know, you play with I assume that Cooper's white. He is white, yes. And it's, your 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 co- co- your teammates. For all different races, you know, right? All different races, right. and, and in the NFL, most of them are black. Yeah. They're the best athletes. I think he's got some problems. He, he might have some problems. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know how it's. A, but Michael Vick came out and said that he accepted his apology. He did a public apology for it. And Michael Vick, who we all know had his own problems with the dog fighting, right, you know, and he said, "I accept his apology." And he was cool with it. He's like basically the leader of the team. Yeah. He is the leader of the team. You know. Um, if he gets his starting job back this year, because they, oh, yeah, they got a little bit of a quarterback. Then you got not only the team, how about the opposition? When you're playing right. opposition, playing right. against other guys, ready to take it off. <laughs> well, they did talk about like if this would have happened on a field rather than at a concert. You know, like in the, the heat of the battle, they were saying a lot of these sports announcers were saying it wouldn't be that big of a deal. It would be a big deal. Yeah, to but call they, somebody a racist slur, sure. mm-hmm. but it, like in, you know when you're. But the bigger picture is where are these football players? Where are they going? They're 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 nuts. They're flipping out. Oh, they're, yeah, they're they're doing things that are so erratic. I mean, if I'm a if I'm a, 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 a which I am a father, my kids just thinking of a sport to play in. I I, I I'm going to steer them away from football. Who these was the, guys who are was so the quarterback? A good quarterback that said that he would not let his son play football. Oh boy! Yeah, he's a he's a starter. I mean, he's not not a Tom Brady. You know, he's not an Aaron Rodgers, but he's he's somebody. Well, maybe one of the commenters in our audience. Yeah, they, they could uh, say he to help us remember yeah. who that is. Yeah, that that was some time ago. That, I'm sorry for not remembering. Maybe that. Troy Aikman, because he's had so many concussions. Maybe. And, oh, he's. Been but anyway, it, it, the game is just turning into a. a and still the number one sport probably in Most the U.S., if not the generates world. Generates more money. The NFL is the biggest sport of anything. Most popular. It's a multi-billion dollar, billion dollar They're sport. They're actually turning into to like uh, what everybody thought they were, big fat head nuts. You right. Know, crazy steroid and, you know. Well, you see what happens. These guys, you know, you get the guys killing themselves over, you know, brain injuries. Right, and afterwards, stuff, you right. Know, it's right. just amazing. No, it's a, it's a huge problem in the league. Yeah, they, there's they got to figure out something, something to do with the. I mean, to change the rules of it, you, you teach these kids from the time they grow up how to hit and how to do this, and right. all of a sudden you want to change it up. You right, know, come don't hit so don't, hard. Don't hit so hard. Out. You can't lead with your head. You can't do this. You know, I understand all the safety. I honestly can. believe they can clean it up by drug testing. I really believe. There's a huge problem with drugs in the league. Yeah. You know, whether it be steroids or there's other a, types. There's, there's a problem with drugs and alcohol everywhere. But in football, you're 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 killing each other. You're These actually performance enhancing. I played football in high bigger. school. I mean, not that that compares, but we didn't go out to kill people. When well, you go out, you hit, you, you hit yeah. hard, and yeah. they hit hard. But now they're so. Um, it's almost it's re, it re, it reach baseball. Matter of fact. They figure if this guy's doing steroids to hit me harder, I'm going to do steroids to hit him harder. Well, because and it's just becoming it. You're turning these, these athletes into actual animals. Well, Frank, what it, what it comes down to is the fact that these guys, you know, you're doing steroids, I'm not. I'll lose my job. Exactly. You know, exactly. These guys right. want their job, you know, and and to compete. To they have, have a, a very good point. When they get it. injured, steroids were a drug that gets you back on the field faster. Right, right. And what happens is.
is if you don't, if you're not with the game, you're, you're out, out of the game. You're out. You and, and half these guys don't know what to do with themselves when no. they're out of football. But you're right, and that's what happened in baseball, which they're trying to stop. If Braun is doing the drugs, I'm gonna have to do the the, the drugs to compete right. with these guys because I can't. Yeah, my team saying, you know what? Look at Braun hitting those and homers. Frank, did he look the, the prototypical steroid? No, he did not. I mean, he was a thin guy. Right. He was basically just yeah, my size looking, only with I a mean, lot of muscle, which yeah. I don't have. <laughs> I mean, with a uniform on, you can't see you the can't muscle. See yeah, that. He, he, just, he didn't look like Bonds and McGuire right. and Conseco. Those guys were giants. They were like the Incredible Hulk coming right. out on the and field. And look what we're doing. We're going to go into baseball next. But it's all one thing that's going well, on in sports right. today because of the money. There's billions of dollar industry. Right. It's a billion dollar industry. Contracts are up for TV right now for everybody, and they're they're signing them. Right. Signing well, them that's up. why football really doesn't look as looked down upon as much as baseball is. Right. Baseball it, it has a hell history of, you know, records. Right. We we still talk about Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb. This, you right. know, I mean, those records were right. in the 30s, you right. know, and we still recognize them. And you know what it is? They don't do that in football. You know, it's not that way, you know. Right. Baseball's that way. It's, right. You know, it's just something a little well, bit here, different. And in baseball, it was a pastime in the summer. It wasn't the number one sport, but ba baseball was uh, American sport. American national sport, right. You know, you, you they have uniforms, little ball caps, you know, and, and you Brush see the there players, and a hot you, dog, you, you relate you know, with the player. You know what I'm saying? In football, they've got the helmets now, they got the pants, they look like uh, machines. Right. Machines. It's and a different it's, game. Yeah, it's a different game, but I think it's it's really coming to a, 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 a problem right now. What's going on with Manziel? Johnny Manziel, which Heisman Trophy winner, um, he's digging a hole for himself with uh, with the GMs in the NFL, I think. He's, he's partying a lot. He's, uh, you know, this... The age that we're in with the access to, you know, social media, the Twitter right. account, and, the, right. you know, everybody wants everybody to know what you're doing, you know, and he's one of those guys that wants everybody to know what he's doing, and what he's doing is he's going out partying, getting drunk, Crossing and they're crossing the line a little, the line line a little yeah. bit, and those are things, you know, nobody realizes that no matter how much talent you have, there is a huge character issue that... GMs and, and managers, uh, coaches will not take a chance on. They're investing millions. They're investing yeah. millions. They're, they're going to sign you up for sixty, seventy, eighty million dollars, and all of a sudden, after three years, you're a bust because you got to, you know, put your girl in a bar. You, you, gotta, you, you know, all these crazy grab things. somebody. I mean, you, you can't. Uh, Classical Burr shoot himself. He didn't right. really shoot anybody. Shot himself. Shot himself. Got the eighteen months for that. That yeah. ruined his career. Yeah. I mean, he still came back. Yeah, but still, he was on top of his game. When he was on top of his game. He won that great catch in the right. Super Bowl. You know, right. he was the one that he sealed the deal for the New York Giants. Well, yeah, let's go go back to what we're talking about. Here's a guy. He's a freshman at Texas, right? Texas A&M. Texas A&M. He wins the Heisman Trophy as a, a freshman. He don't First know, one ever. Right. First freshman ever to win the Heisman. I think Archie Griffin. Did Archie Griffin, was he a sophomore? No, Archie Griffin, won, he was a sophomore, but he won two in a row. Two in a row. He won two in a row. But here's a guy that wasn't taught... I think how to handle the adulation, the, the you know, you're you're on top, you won the Heisman, and he he's just a kid. He's well, they kid. they seem to be talking about that they did some sort of interview with the family, and they seem a little dysfunctional. The father, right, uh, Paul, I believe his name. It is Paul, and he's like, you know, he he made a comment saying that you know, with all the media attention my kid is getting. Uh, He'd be better off getting locked up in jail rather than have to put up with this. <laughs> and I'm like sitting there. I'm, right. I'm listening to this, and I'm like, oh, okay. Rather than my son win the Heisman, I want him to get pinched for a DUI or whatever, whatever yeah. charges. There must be bigger troubles at home. Right. There's bigger gotta troubles be something. with him, and they, rather, they can't handle it. They rather have the uh, For them to jail. say that, there's got to be something. That's unbelievable. But that's, you know. That's his, you know, he's got a couple years to go. Can't yeah. get out, you know, he's got to go three he years. He'll grow up. He'll be, yeah, hopefully he gets more mature. You know, I hate to see a kid that has all that talent. God-given talent. God-given talent, yeah. you know. But um, anyway, I wanted to touch on baseball a little bit. A-Rod's suspension is under oh. negotiation right now. Alex Rodriguez. Okay, so we're, we've moved from football to baseball. Yes. Yeah. And, and before you continue, I just want to throw this out there. Uh, uh, logic. You know who you are. You're one of our uh, valued uh, uh, listeners and commenters, and uh, thank you for your comments. And uh, I know you wanted to know from Michael about A-Rod, uh, so here you are. 
Well, A-Rod, they're negotiating his his suspension, and he's going to get suspended. He, he'll get the rest of the year for sure, and the lifetime ban is still on the table with baseball. You know, But how old is he now? He's 40 years old. Yeah. There's going to be 40. He's 39 right now. By the time his suspension is so like, over, be like a guy so going to jail. It's a death sentence. Right. <laughs> you give a guy at 75 years old, you know, <laughs> they negotiate sentence. down for 50 years to 20 years, he's still going to die. Yeah, right. Exactly. And that's what I think is going to happen. Now, he could he could play in Japan. Yeah. You know, he could go somewhere else and play, play in Europe, you know, wherever right. they... He's just being from the major he's just he, He's just going to... But they'll give him a next year suspension, I think, also. They're they're talking about that. It's still able to come out yet. You know, we'll find out later today. I think with the, or at least within the next couple of days. But no matter what it is, it's a lifetime ban. So baseball could save themselves by not saying, "Well, we banned them for life. We just gave them a two-year suspension, which is his life." Right. You know. Well, that's that's this this. Um, here's a guy that was. Um his career was like uh, well, he was like the a golden book. child, right? Exactly yeah. right. He was the, he, he he was was the he, golden he boy. Was baseball, uh, next child. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah was he was a face of baseball. Face of baseball. He was like a young guy, shortstop. Uh, in the All Star game, gave Kel Ripken the shortstop. Right, I remember that. Yeah, this classy guy. Let and Ripken then, play his last All Star so game at short. He went to third. third. Yeah. And, uh, just he went from Texas. He was a star. Went to the Yankees. Won some World Series. Right. One. He won one over there. He had a terrible postseason uh, career. Then yeah. he, he had that one good one right. when they did right. win. They so won. he did step up there. But uh, to end your career on this note is uh, well, he got Frank. If you remember, in '03, he, he tested admitted positive. To, tested yeah, positive, positive. Admitted to using a you know banned substance, and then for him to go, you know what the problem with. What he's got going on right now is the fact that they're saying that he obstructed, you know, he tried to bribe people not to say what he was doing at yeah. this biogenesis lab, okay? And that's that's why I think baseball's got the extreme hard on for him. Yeah, right. You know, that right. they're, the, you know, wait a minute, not only are you doing it again, saying that you never would do it, he, he goes around doing these speeches and stuff about how bad it is to the kids and well, don't do it. Well, that's what uh, you know. Pete off uh, Giamatti with Pete Rose. Right. Not only do we catch you, you're on the, you're on camera denying they don't they're picking on you and they're not they're it's not true and they don't know what they're doing and that's what really aggravated Giamatti at right. the time when he was running baseball with Pete Rose. But I believe that Giamatti would have reinstated Pete Rose had he lived. He died it, with what a year later. That was the worst thing that could happen to Pete Rose because everybody around him what wanted to keep him wanted you know, to keep respect him Giamatti's. Uh, Order. Yeah. His order. They wouldn't. You know, they didn't know what was really on his mind. You know right. that maybe he would have said, "Okay, five years is enough. Right. I'm going to put him back in baseball." You know what? He didn't bet against his team. Never he take this team. And that's another thing. Pete Rose would never admit he was betting. He doesn't break. Well, that's what they all do. Yeah. Deny it till you die. Yeah. You know, the only one I got to say that really didn't come under that same scrutiny right. of uh, like guys just lying all the time was McGuire. He just says, "I won't talk about the past." Yeah. He didn't deny it. Right. He didn't affirm it, right? But he just said, "I won't talk about the past. I'm here to talk about now." Right? You know, well, which was basically so Russo did him a huge favor by bringing him back. Oh, put him back on the payroll as a bad right. instructor and really gave him back some credibility. Yeah, he was, and he, you know, he was a green hitter before steroids. Right. You know, he right. didn't. These guys here, like I said, Barry Bonds, does he belong in the Hall of Fame? <laughs> he was a Hall of Famer before he started using steroids, in my opinion. Right. You know, but it all. But you got to look at it this way too, though. Who is he edging out now? That was borderline Hall of Famer right. because of the steroids. And, they, and that's what baseball wants the players to understand. You're doing it straight. Why? Why should we allow these guys to, uh, you know, take these drugs to be better? And, and and it hurts what you do. So exactly. you got to open your mouth. You got when you see get somebody doing the stuff, you got to all turn them in. Right. Well, that's what they're doing. Yeah. Well, basically, before the players' association were totally behind the baseball players. Now the players are like, hey, he's not clean. Yeah. And I am. And I am. And I'm fighting for a job. Yeah. Right. Before exactly. they would all band together. It was right. a, it was a strong you know well, union. When you of see them. a guy in the minors doing nothing, you're you're a number one rated player. All of a sudden. Uh, Joe Smith starts hitting 400, but and they're going, hey, wait a minute now, this guy did nothing. Well, you don't. Think baseball needed that. 98. I remember with my son, 
that when the McGuire Sosa thing right. was going on. And I, I'll never forget sitting in the basement, and my kid was, well, that was 98, so how old was he? Nine years old? And I says, Michael, you, and at the time I, I was oblivious to the you know, sure. steroids. And most people were, or don't want to know. And, break into, and I remember McGuire hit that little line shot down the left field line and went out of the park for the 60-second home run. Right. And I says, Michael, I says, you're going to remember this the rest of your life where you were. You were sitting with your dad in the basement watching the game, having some popcorn and a couple of pops. And, right. You know. Right. And now it's all doesn't mean anything anymore. Right. You know what I mean? Right. My kid's 23 years old right now, and he's like, you know, what the hell is that? They know it's hard. Because they know it was, it was false. Right. It it was, right. it, maybe, you know, he's only in his 20s. When he's in his 40s, it'll come back. Is a no, but you know what I'm saying? Right. It's yeah, a sure. false pretenses. Like, oh, I say. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm not saying it. It was a the value of it. The value of it is the minute. The guy that looks like he's escaping all this. And we're still on the subject with Rodriguez and the rest, or... It's so sad. Looks like he's been dodging this. It's like nobody really. Well, you, can, you, you know speak he's English, doing. Remember? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in front of the, but you don't hear a lot of the, about him. In front of the uh, Senate committee or congressional committee, he couldn't speak English. All of a sudden, I saw him do a thousand interviews after <laughs> Cubs games. He, he spoke better English than I did. He, right. You know me. I say all kinds of wrong words and stuff. This but guy, he, he, he don't hear nothing about him. I mean, like he doesn't he, care. He's, he's going to take he, all. He's got millions and millions of dollars. He's in the Dominican. He's in the yeah. Dominican. Yeah. And, you know, out there you live like he probably owns a whole town out there for all we know. Wait, they named the town after my guess. Yeah. I'm kidding. But anyway, that's that's pretty much about it. But there, they didn't get, come out with the list of uh, Bar yeah. Bar Bartolo, uh, Bartolo, uh, Bartolo, Bartolo it, 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 It's it's going to get over. You know, they wanted to get the big fish first. You know, so they got Braun. Looks like A Rod's going down. Within right. days, we'll know about that. And then you know Nelson Cruz, you know right. Cologne, um Cabrera, you know, right. all these guys. Not, not the Cabrera, but oh, Detroit. Yeah. Not oh, him. He's God. a clean guy. Yeah. See, crunch. there's a guy that's mad at these guys. I'm trying to do it, and right. it, it, it makes his records more impressive, or what he's doing, because he's clean. He's doing it clean, right? Clean. And, and he, you, know, you look at, you know, I always would get in arguments like the If he didn't get injured, I think he would have surpassed all the records and been known as the greatest player of all time is Ken Griffey Jr. Yeah, he, he was, had the best swing. He was, I mean, he was so natural. good out there. Yeah, he could have played field sport, to be honest with you. Oh, Griffey, yeah. He could play football, probably basketball. I saw him in Florida hitting balls on the uh, golf course that I was at, and you got to see him hit the golf ball. Yeah. He didn't know where it was going, but, but he, he hit, hit it. it my oh, oh, my God. Huh. Yeah, Unbelievable. Yeah. So it's about, um, I think we've touched on... Yeah, it touched on everything there is. It's a slow week, you know. We'll have more on Monday with the weekend and everything. Football's there. picking up. Football's yeah, picking yeah. up. You know, exactly. training camps are started, you know. Yeah. Good. All right, well, good sports uh, segment today, guys. Uh, for you listeners out there who tune in for our sports, uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we will be back with more sports Monday. Monday, August 5th, 2013. For those of you interested in our somewhat popular behind-the-scenes piece, that begins now. Michael, I have some comments here, Michael and Frank. Uh, let's see. One of our commenters, uh, Merlin, who I'm going to call, Merlin, I'm going to call you Murray from now on. How's that? Murray, like Murray Slaughter from Murray <laughs> Tyler Moore. <laughs> I guess we think of him when we think of the, our our Murray. Yeah. Uh, Murray, you wrote in one of your comments. Uh, Carlisi seems, and this is re referring to the late outfit boss Sam Carlisi, uh, the the late Chicago outfit boss Sam Carlisi. Carlisi seems like he was an extremely frightening person. Maybe as much as Ayupa, who was also another late is a now late outfit boss uh, in Chicago. Uh, Michael, any comments on that? Was was Carlisi, would you agree with Murray's uh, I could see his uh, view? I, I could see his view if you didn't know him. I if see. you knew the man, he was a, he was a, a good guy, but he, he did have a scowl about him. Mm -hmm. He just was, uh, you know, unemotional. You know, I mean, he, he wasn't a guy that would, uh, if you told the funniest joke in the world and mm -hmm. nine people out of ten... Uh, and he's the only one not laughing. After he was made boss, 
you, the two of you had a conversation. You made a remark. I remember this in an earlier conversation. Would you tell us about that? Yeah, we were. I was in Florida at the Diplomat Hotel in the tech room, and we were having a cocktail. Where, in Miami or? In uh, Hollandale. Hollandale. Hollandale, yeah. And we were having a cocktail, and I was with a friend of mine, and this friend of mine was, you know, very influential to me, you know. Yeah. And we're sitting there talking. And Why don't we call him a confidant? A confidant. All right. Okay. Uh, and conversation goes this and that. And Sam says to me, Black Sam says to me, he says, you're going to be all right, kid. You're going places, you know, and which was drunk talk. Right. You know, well, it was right. I was you, going you, to you, the washroom. Well, <laughs> but you wound up here hosting a sports Well, yeah, uh, I guess I did show, go some places. I mean, yeah. So he, he, said, right. uh, he says, you want to be the boss someday, huh? And I was sitting there, and I had had a few. Because he was talking about your father was a heavy, very, very big shot in Chicago. Yeah. Plus, you were driving, you were coming up through Jackie Cerrone. Right. So I would assume that's the same thing. And he said, you know, he went on about it, and I, I said, you know what, Sam? I said, I don't ever want to be the boss. He said, what do you mean? He said, I'm telling the boss this here. Right. And like I say, I was drunk, you know. Well, there were people, all, there, everyone had a few drinks. Yeah, everybody had a few, and he, he says, what are you talking about? I says, all the bosses go to jail. I just want to be the boss's silent partner. In other words, you cut up the money with me, and mm -hmm. I sit there on the sidelines. And well, that's the underboss, yeah. basically. <laughs> basically, yeah, or even better than that, that you're no boss at all. What was his remark to that? Or did it, he just said, okay, kid. He yeah. just, you know, he didn't get mad. Right. I thought he would get extremely pissed off. And my confidant that was there, if looks could kill, I would have dropped right there. I see. He wanted to, oh, my God, he was yeah. so mad at me to talk to yeah. that man that way. So did Sam, it's, it's safe to say Sam liked you. Well, I, I, he disliked me. I think he had a fondness for me. You know, yeah. I did help the guy out to play golf. He, yeah. you, know, you, you know, when he started playing golf, he was 65 years old. And he, he says, am I ever going to be able to shoot what you shoot? So Jackie Sean was dead at that time? He was in prison. Yeah, he was, oh, in, he was prison. in prison. He was in prison. And I said, Sam... There's only so good you're going to... I mean, you can't lie to the guy. I'm telling him the truth. I mean, how good do you think when you've done nothing athletic in your whole life? Mm -hmm. And at 65 years old, you, you can't start golf. playing golf at 65. Right, and, and right. And uh, expect to shoot in the 70s right. by the time you're 67, you know, or 68. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. You should have told him if you lived to be 100, you might have a shot. Uh, you still wouldn't have had a shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wasn't there something, now that we're on the subject of Sam Carlisi, did you not tell me that Someone told you, or maybe you heard from Carlisi's mouth himself, after Louis the Mooch, who is Louis Eboli, after he died, uh, Carlisi found out that some things about Louis that... And I, I see you're, you, you, you look very uncomfortable right now, so I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, edit what I'm saying in the making. You don't have to edit it, he just doesn't <laughs> refuse the answer. Well... I'm, well, but if I could make him feel less uncomfortable, I won't even throw, put out everything I was going to. And I'll just paraphrase it or change it a little bit. Was Carlisi upset about something he discovered about Louis the Mooch after his death? Well, he found out he wasn't a real team player, let's say. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> but not meaning he was a stool pigeon. No, no, no. No, okay, I want to clarify No, no, that. no. Yeah, because you leave it's, enough it's, open to the imagination no, when you say that. His kids are all good people. My brother-in-law knew him, and yeah. you know they're all good people. And Louis was a stand-up, wonderful guy. But I guess when it came time to cut up the money, that there was money that wasn't being cut up properly. Being cut up properly, and and they found out after Louis had already died. Yeah, well, he was. Dead what was the the funny? Well, it's not really funny, but what was the unique comment that Sam Carlisi made about Louis the Mooch after he died? Well, I won't get into detail about what he did say, but let's just say if you could kill somebody twice, he would have liked to. I see. <laughs> I see. All right, we'll leave it at that. Uh, now, Murray also goes on. Uh, he's asking me on your behalf, uh, Joe, at what point did Michael go from being with Lee, who was your father, to actually being with uh, Elmwood Park officially? And, and I guess we kind of discussed that, and y you... Uh, before uh, in preparation for the show, and you said something. To, uh, I think you said 18 years old. It would be the answer. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Yes. I mean, uh, then he also, uh, lastly, Murray wants to know 
Uh, when would you say Elmwood Park distant themselves from Cicero? And I think that you made it very clear about the La Petra Apes uh, situation. Well, it wasn't a distance. It's just that the, the good friends, the, it, it the La Petras. The bond faded. The bond faded. You know, and Diminished. it was just other guys that weren't, you know, as friendly with the guys in Elmwood Park anymore. Uh-huh. These guys were like a part of something. But who they were, were very close. Who were the guys that kept the glue together? Well, there? Angelo, his brother Jimmy. La Petra. Kirk, you know, Kirk was, you know, before well, that. Well, Kirk's going to go on a while. But well, that's who took over was the Lapitras, the Johnny Apes afterwards. So, so it was Apes and the Lapitras that kind of held it together. Right. Exactly. Once well, they're gone, Cicero and Elmwood Park were not as tightly. They, they weren't. I mean, it wasn't like there was, a, you know, any type of uh, disruption going on. But it was just like they weren't, you know, before they used to go the for bond, dinners the together. Bond the bond broke. broke. They used to go for dinners together. Yeah. They would, you know, they would have a Christmas dinner. Where Why were the guys in Chinatown so controlled? Were there a lot of them from Cicero, or that it just was their boundary? That was their area? I guess, you know, I mean, you're talking about things that I was not even a teenager at the time to know, but I, I, I would assume so. Yeah. I would assume so, that they would, uh, but, you know, they would. Well, who's like, who's the north side boss? Johnny? North side? North side? North. Yeah, North side. Uh, can't, can't you keep, uh, uh, Kenosha North? Or, I mean, how far North? North Pole. No. Well, Santa Claus is the boss. <laughs> <of> the <Pole. laughs> North side of Chicago. Uh, um, well, I think that Michael feels uncomfortable now, I, I'm sensing. But I think that, and I'll, I'll throw out there that in my in my opinion, for whatever it's worth, and I know it's not as important as Michael's, but I think that the the most prominent outfit guy known today who still yields the most respect, despite the fact that some people question whether or not he's even a stool pigeon, uh, is Johnny DeFranco. I mean, clear. How about clear. the Crusoes? The Crusoes get a lot of uh, well, the, they're under the radar too, right? Well, yeah, I would. I mean, just read the newspapers and you can see they're under the radar, but now you're coming up with guys from Chinatown that I don't necessarily see as the nor even resembling the North Side in the faintest way. Yeah. So. It's just, it, it just funny that Johnny yeah. gets all the, uh, mm-hmm. the uh, I guess, the heat as the boss. Well, you know, whether he likes it or not, he is who he is. Yeah. And, you know, I, I look at outfit guys, as, you know, till death do us part. You could be a proclaimed retired guy like Michael is, but the bottom line is when you are an outfit guy, you're an outfit guy for life. Uh, like no, Jets? When you're a Jet, you're a no, Jet? Like that, or no different than a murderer or a rapist. If you've raped one woman in your life in 1950, you're a rapist you know, a hundred years later. And that's part of the identity of, of, of being branded something as significant as a uh, gangster, rapist, killer, tax chief, whatever it is, you are that. If you're non-acting anymore, Michael's been retired, but you can't get away with it, from it. And Johnny DeFranzo is never going to get away from what he is. And uh, whether he uses his power or not, or uses his power once in a while, he still has the power. Whatever he does with it, he does with it, but he, the power is there, period. End of story. The um, Now we have another Father Guido. Sarducci? No, just Father Guido. He's mm-hmm. another uh, loyal uh, reader and listener and commenter. And uh, he writes, I agree with Magnifici and Coconati and Willie Mays and Mickey Mantle. Ask Mike if he knows. Oh, okay, so he goes, touches on the sports, goes right into the behind-the-scenes uh, stuff. Ask Mike if he knows how Black Sam got the moniker, or was Wings more widely used? Well, Wings was, a, that was a press thing. That was the a, media put that the out? The media put that out there. Just I, like, I, never, okay. I never heard anybody refer to Refer to him as Wings. What did you call Black. Sam when you saw him? You Sam. Him Sam. <laughs> Everyone Sam. called him Sam. Sam. You didn't say Black. How would Sam. you refer to him if you were talking about him? Well, just because Sam is a very popular name, and if you wanted common. to, get, yeah, common yeah. name, um, you would say, but yeah, it was, well, you know, with Black Sam. So you would refer to him. It was and Black, and I think it was just because of this. You know, he was a Sicilian, and he had a dark complexion, and, and that's what I believe that. That's how he got it. And yeah, that's right. a nigger Joe picked up his name, wasn't it? Was it his complexion? I guess. I don't know. I didn't I know, think him. It was. I know he was 
I was dead. He was yeah. dead before I was born. Well, so was George Washington, but I, I know that he had wooden teeth. <laughs> but now, here, now we have, um, okay, and now Father Guido also wants to know, what was the relationship between Teets and Cerrone, and how about, do you have any stories about Teets, uh, Joe B., or Cerrone? Anything uh, come to mind at all? Well, I, I know that I mean, Jack had a tremendous amount of respect for, for Pete's. I see. For Sam, Sam Battaglia, was it? Right. That's another Sam. See how you could get sure. your stuff. Sure. Like Pete's and Giancana. Uh, uh, a lot of Di Stefano. Uh, or Sam Di Stefano. Di Stefano, however, however you want to pronounce it. But uh, Jack had a tremendous amount of respect for, for Pete's. I mean, you talked with him with, with you know, high admiration. You know, mm -hmm. and he, he really did. And what was it, your question? Of? Uh, just... The relationship between Teeth and Cerrone, you're saying, was respectful on Cerrone's part. We were not Teeth isn't here. To, uh, no representative Teeth is here to uh, to comment on his side. How about the st any stories about Teeth? No, I mean you were. I wouldn't know. He yeah. was dead when you were a young boy. And uh, how about anything you want to? Any unique stories about Joe B? The listeners love to hear about him. About batters? <laughs> yes. Um. Well, I'll tell you, uh, we were at a, we went to a restaurant with Faji, Jack, and I. Yeah, that's um, Ben Felicio. Ben Felicio. Yeah, Benny Faji. Felicio. And uh, what was that place called on Lawrence Avenue, the the library? Oh. You remember that, that French restaurant? I know what you're talking it was about. Whitney, oh, I've never downstairs been there. was Whitney's, upstairs was the library, or vice versa. And Jack was hollering at me. Well, not hollering, just explaining very demonstrative about uh, <laughs> that I have to, you know, you got to start paying taxes. You know, you're making cash money. You guys are paying taxes. They'll lock you up. You know, this IRS, you never get rid of them. You pay them more. I imagine Rudy Frado wasn't there for that lesson, was he? <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, okay. But, uh, and JB, one of the few times, now I'm 18 years old at the time, and JB turns on me and says, Kid, it's a bite in the ass, but we all got to pay. Even Uncle gets his end, <laughs> just like I get mine. Okay. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> So, in other words, and I felt like so, like, that for him to talk to a punk kid like that was yeah. like so, I was so, you know, I got full of myself. You know? Right. you know what I'm yeah. trying to say? It's like, yeah. here he is, like, including me in, like... What a vote of confidence. Right, you know, yeah. like, you better pay your taxes, you know, okay. and don't screw around. And right. I did. I always did. Could we assume that Joe paid his taxes on every dime he ever made, based on that uh, advice? <laughs> Well, if you gave share. the government fifty million, I would assume he did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think. I, I think Does he that did, answer your question? I think he disclosed in the nineteen eighties his net worth was like seven hundred grand. So I doubt that that <laughs> was the case. Um, all right. Any? Let's see. Um, any other things come to mind? I, I, we've answered. We've I think addressed a lot of the questions here, uh, if not all of them, and. Great stories about Joe B. You know, one guy we we seem to never put in the hot seat with questions is a guy that I'm staring at. Our your co-host, uh, our co-host Frank Coconati, who I know was very close with Frank Calabrese Senior. Right. I mean, you used to go to Florida with him. Uh, anything yeah. you care to say about him? I mean, uh, just he was a he was a great teacher of um, business and. Um, <laughs> did he, did he teach a business, business class at Triton? Yeah, <laughs> good business. And no, I was more closer to his son <laughs> than his father. The father I met through with Frank Jr. Mm -hmm. so but well, we had a good relationship as a as friends, more or less friends. I see. You know, we went to Florida. You know, Frankie was out there. The whole family. Was when he died? Was there a wake for him? I, you know what? I just know what I read in the paper. I mean, the, the newspapers did quote. So you didn't go to any. No, they, they did have one though. They, oh, they did. They did. They did. Yeah, a closed uh, private. Um, I see. Was it in uh, Illinois or was it somewhere? Uh, at a, you know, out of town. I think out it was of out of state. In Arizona, with yeah, the kids. I, you know what? I really don't know what exactly. It was what. private. No yeah, one. Yeah, it was private. I see. I guess the Kurt went there. The son Kurt well, was, was there. And, yeah. Yeah. Did and, Frank go? Uh, Frank Junior? No. He did not. No. Well, I mean, how could he? How could he go? I, I wouldn't ask how could he not go. It's how could well, he, he was go? was in Arizona, <laughs> you know. But <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know what. Uh, I know more politics than I do know about the outfit. Yeah. You know, I know the big outfit today to me is the politicians. So Same. Frank Calabrese was minor 
compared to what these politicians are stealing today. So, well, you're not going to get any argument from me on that. Yeah. I mean, what uh, the city of Chicago is? What what did you say? In the, you read in the paper today, oh, nearly a billion in debt or something. Yeah. They continually talk yeah. about being short, and then the yeah. next day you'll read about them spending five, you know, million or no, five hundred million on a basketball court or yeah. a. Uh, or remember the bond they leave uh, was. I don't know if he put it up or he had to put it up when he was trying to get the Olympics. He put up five hundred million right, for that. Right. Nobody knows where that's at. Yeah. The city's in bad shape. Bad shape. Well, um, I don't want to deviate too much away from what the true nature of the behind-the-scenes piece is, but I, at the same time, don't want to detract with your your comments, Frank. Yeah. The politicians in the Chicagoland area are. Uh, in some ways, it looks like they took a class somewhere that the outfit also took, you right. know, and learned some of the same right. things somewhere. And uh, very sophisticated, you know. they're a very sophisticated mob. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, everyone, I guess we could end today's behind the scenes. We'll be back on Monday, August the fifth. Everyone, have a great weekend. Have a good weekend, Take care. everyone.